So I'm going to talk to you about ecotourism in the National Strategy for Combating Wildlife Trafficking. We find that support for community-based wildlife conservation is one of the main objectives. And as discussed by Wade, a sport hunting might be an option, but ecotourism is a non-consumptive wildlife activity that can explore and support the efforts of the U.S. in this direction. So what we did was to do original field work in Tanzania. Three of our members went to Tanzania to do field work and interviews there. Moreover, we gathered data from the United Nations World Tourism Organization and the World Bank to identify how big is the ecotourism sector for the economy of those developing countries. And of course, we review what is the U.S. currently doing, what is the U.S. money going with regard to ecotourism activities. So to the first question, how big is the ecotourism sector, we find there are some difficulties to gather data. There is no data available on wildlife ecotourism, so we looked at the broader picture, how much money developing countries receive for international tourism going to those places. Here you find a list of some of the main, of the countries that have a really big contribution from the international tourism sector, so the GDP, and I want to reach your attention to Tanzania that have 3.5% of the GDP comes from international tourism. However, the World Bank has estimated that up to 10% of the, the tourism industry contributes indirectly by the creation of jobs and other activities towards these industries. So what about the, what is the U.S. agencies currently doing to support ecotourism in those countries? We find that USAID and Fish and Wildlife are the main agencies performing some kind of directly or directly support to ecotourism and wildlife conservation in some countries. And Tanzania, again, received from the USAID almost more than $5 million to support the wildlife management areas. And I will come back to that number that I just said before in one of our, in our second policy option that we wanna share with you today about like how the US and particularly US Congress should review the effectiveness of these programs and oversight what the agencies are doing because our field research showed that sometimes those management problem, programs are not really effectively uh, implemented and are not the money coming from the ecotourism and it's not going back to local communities as it should be in order to increase the incentive for wildlife conservation in local communities. So, as I said before, reviewing and ensuring that the U.S. money in ecotourism activities is spent properly with supporting local communities is key in this area. Another proposal or policy option might be, uh, again, similar to the uh, uh, sport hunting paper, is to support to create an accreditation system that could be done either internationally with different international organizations or at the U.S. level, particularly to um, ensure consumer protection for those Americans that want to travel abroad and help with wildlife conservation efforts. Finally, we found that um, ecotourism operators and NGOs in the field working on ecotourism activities can be relevant actors to combat anti-poaching measures. And there, this is where we proposed, or we find that an interesting measure would be a hotline where tour operators could call and buy an anonym, uh, with an anonymous statute and said if an animal was poached in a region and how and where, etc. This could remove the negative effect that sometimes said that the poaching is happening in a region might have, and also it could help to gather some data of where is the poaching going on and where animals have been killed. With this, I will pass it to Leo to talk about public-private partnership.